Hey everyone and welcome to the Oak Arts YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to revisit a pattern that we've done previously on the channel. We're not going to be remaking that item, but we're going to actually do the add-ons to it. Today, we're going to revisit the crafter's tool bag, which we've already made on the channel. I have a link down below for the video, but this pattern actually has three patterns in it, the big bag, and also a little notions wallet and a drawstring pouch. So those are the two things we're going to add on today. So let me just show you. So this is the crafter's tool bag, nice and big. Highly recommend you make it. It's one of my top five favorite patterns. We did the zipper. Highly recommend you do the zipper. Right here we have this adorable little notions pouch. You can actually snap it onto the pocket of the tool bag. So when I unsnap this, this is a very simple little pouch. Take it out and you see it has a snap on it. Front, back, easy peasy, lovely, simple. Simple, yet when you add it on to the pocket of the tool bag, it gives the whole bag a really cool look. So you see, I'm just gonna snuggle this down in there and then I can snap it to the actual pocket. And even though it's on there, I still can use that same slip pocket. So we're gonna go over how to make that. As well as that, we're gonna go over how to make the drawstring inserts. So you see, when you open up this little cube to here, I have two little adorable pouches. These are the little drawstring bags. Here's one that I've already made. I know it's kind of squished. I'm using water resistant canvas for these little bags. It works fine. However, if you really want like a soft, cozy cinch top and stuff like that, I would suggest using quilt cotton. But if you do use water resistant canvas, it does work just fine. And you can see you have a top, an exterior, and a lining. And then your drawstring of choice. Uh, for this first one here, I'm actually using, this is like piping insert, which I would not recommend because it's not really meant for this, uh, but I couldn't find any of like my leather cording. Uh, for the tutorial today though, I'm gonna be using some ribbon that I got from a craft store. But you see, it's very cute, very simple. So we're gonna go over how to make both of those items today. They are quick, they are easy. They are items that you can make with this amazing toolkit or you could just make them individually. So for example, these drawstring bags come together so fast that if I was throwing a party, like a birthday party, or maybe like a dinner party, a book party, something like that, and I wanted to have a bunch of little goodies for everybody who attended, I can make a bunch of these. Oh my gosh, I can make a bunch of these in fun fabric. Like if I was throwing a book party, I could get fabric that kind of reminds me or goes with the book. And then I could make a bunch of these, fill them with tasty snacks, fill them with some goodies, what a fun party favor, right? So it's very simple, very easy. So it's really nice that with this pattern, like it all goes together. However, you can use them all separately. You get three for one. I love that. It's a good deal. So thank you to Can Do Crafts as always for allowing me to use your patterns on my channel. You guys have to go check out her latest bag. Oh my gosh, it is adorable. I, has, I was hoping to actually make it this week, but time got away from me, however, it will be coming on the channel very soon. It is a very, very sweet bag. If you're new to the Oak Learners YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. If there's a pattern you wanna see from Can Do Crafts, leave it down in the comment section. We've done quite a few of them on the channel. They are just, they keep coming. They, she's faster at writing the patterns than I am at filming them. So I, my list keeps getting longer, but I, eventually I will do every single one of the Can Do Crafts patterns on the Oak Roots YouTube channel. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so here's everything you're gonna need today. It's not a whole lot. Um, if you're gonna be doing two of the pouches, I would suggest you have about a half yard material. You can see I'm using three different pieces of material here. And then you're gonna want some ribbon. For the first one I used, I actually use like a filler for piping and I would not suggest that. It is not firm enough for that. But this is just like a three quarter inch wide ribbon from Hobby Lobby it looks like. Any type of ribbon is gonna do here. For the little fold over snap wallet, you just need about a fat quarter of material. I have a faux leather and then a water resistant canvas. And then you're gonna need a set of snaps. I'm gonna be using water resistant canvas on the little drawstring pouch as well. It's honestly not the best material to use for drawstring pouches, especially for the top piece. Uh, quilt cotton is really gonna be best because it's going to cinch easier. Water resistant canvas is going to try to kind of go back straight. So that's just something to think about. But, you know, for me, it's always use what you got. And this is what I had out at the moment. So it still turns out beautiful. So here's pretty much all the other stuff I'll be using today. As always, a good pair of scissors. I love the Kai scissors. These are the Kai 
7230. That's the scissors from them I really like. I have a one inch by six inch ruler. I have a scrap piece of Decaval Light. It can be a scrap piece of anything. Fusible fleece, foam, Decaval Heavy, Decaval Light. It's just for the snaps. Whenever we install the snaps, especially if you're using quilt cotton, you don't want it to just be attached to quilt cotton because it will rip the fabric over time. So it needs a little bit of beef behind it. I have a lighter for cleaning up any loose ends. And then I have the installation tools for that snap. I have a hole punch. The hole punch is negligible depending on the snap you're using. If you're using like a plastic cam snap, then you don't need the hole punch. You could just poke it with a stiletto. Um, if you're using a metal one, you might want to have a hole punch on hand. I have a rivet setting tool to go with it. And then I have my rivet die set. I have my bobbin thread here, which is a Guterman thread from Joann's, a polyester thread. And then for my top needle, I'm going to be using some Tex 45 weight thread from Saya Swag. I will be using a Microtex 8012 as always. If you're making quilt cotton for the drawstring, you might want to use a Microtex 7010 instead. Um, it's a thinner needle and it's better with quilt cotton. The thicker the needle is, the more likely it is that it's just gonna shove your fabric down into the feed dogs instead of piercing it. So something to think about. Water resistant canvas works well with the Microtex 8012 though. I have an air racing marker to help placement. I have a seam ripper because I'm not perfect in a stiletto at the sewing machine. And then I have a healthy supply of clover clips. I also have a safety pin and this is going to be to feed the drawstring through the drawstring bag in the end. So we're gonna start with the drawstring. So let's go over those pattern pieces. For the drawstring, you're gonna have two top pieces and this is gonna be what the drawstring goes through. And then for the bottom of it, you're gonna have the exterior, two cuts of material, and then the lining, two cuts of material. They don't have to be different. They can all be the same. They can all be different, whatever you want. This could be super scrappy, which is pretty much what I'm doing. These are mostly scraps here. And then for your ribbon or whatever you're gonna use as a cord to go through the drawstring, you need at least 34 inches of it per drawstring bag. So if you're making two of them, you're going to need 68 inches of it. Something to think about. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you have not already is take your lining and exterior main panels and on the bottom corners, of each one of these, so on the bottom of all four of these panels, you're gonna to wanna to cut out a three inch by three inch square in order to box these. So three inches by three inch little square on the bottom corners of all four of these pieces of material. All right, once you have those boxed, take your two lining pieces. So for me, the green is gonna be the lining. Take your two lining pieces and lay them right sides together. And we're gonna clip along the sides and the bottom. And then on the bottom edge of your lining, you're gonna mark a four inch opening centered. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of eyeball it, but four inches in the center, mark that so that we know that we're gonna leave that open and we're not gonna sew that. Now we're gonna repeat the same with the exterior, taking two of our exterior pieces and laying them right sides together. And you can clip again on the sides and the bottom. So now I'm gonna take both these to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew along the sides and the bottom at a half inch seam allowance. On the lining one though, I'm not gonna sew between these two marks. So I'm going to start from the end, backstitch there, backstitch at that first mark, skip over the opening and then continue on. And anytime you're starting or stopping or coming to the end or the beginning of a corner, make sure you backstitch. You're gonna wanna have a lot of reinforcement at all these corners here. So once you have these sewn up, you're gonna wanna press your seams open. So for me, I'm just gonna use my fingers to do this because water resistant canvas folds really easily. But if you're using a quilt cotton, you can use an iron here. It'll be nice and quick. Do this to all the seams, sides and bottom seams, lining and exterior, just press them open. All right, so I'm gonna start with the exterior. Once you have those pressed open, you're going to just pull on the cut corners of those bottom boxes. Pull the two seams together, so the side seam and the bottom seam, so that they match up at the seam, right in the middle, and then clip together and then just tug down further here to straighten this out and clip right along this edge. And I'm gonna go to the other side of the exterior, the other box corner, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So just pulling these seams together and then making sure the seams are pressed open and the cut edge is as straight as possible. Sometimes you'll notice it kind of bows, like it sticks out like that. And if you just go down to the middle here and tug, it'll help straighten that out. So if it's not working and you're fighting it right at the edge, try to straighten it out further down. All right, so I have the exterior pin. I'm gonna repeat that with the lining. 
Now I'm going to take all four of these clipped edges to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew along each one of them at a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end on all of these and make sure those seams are staying open. So once you have those sewn, turn the exterior right side out. Now have your exterior right side out and your lining wrong side out. So now you can set these to the side for just a moment. So now grab your two drawstring panels and on the back side of one of them, mark one and three quarters of an inch down from the top of each corner. So just mark it down. This is going to be guidance for our stitching. So then take your two drawstring panels and lay them right sides together. You can use some clips and clip along the two short edges. And now we're gonna sew between that one and three quarter inch mark and the bottom edge of our drawstring channel. So whichever side you decide to start on, if you start on the bottom or you start at that mark, you're going to just sew between there. So the top one and three quarter inch of your panel here is going to remain unsewn. And we're gonna sew at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now you're going to take this side seam over here that you just sewed and you're gonna fold it back wrong sides together. So one side seam is going to sew back wrong sides together just like this. Give it a good press and if you're using quilt cotton here definitely grab an iron to help with this. Um, I'm going to be using double sided tape because it's just going to be easier for me. So what we want to do is we actually want to fold the long edge back wrong sides together to meet that stitching. So you're folding it back a quarter of an inch which I know is really small. And then once you have that folded back, you're gonna fold it again. We're trying to hide all the raw edges here. So then you're gonna fold it again back so you have that whole half inch seam folded back with no raw edges, just like that. So I'm gonna use double-sided tape because it is just gonna be a little helpful here. I'm just gonna add it right above my stitching. Now I'm gonna remove the paper just like that. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold that raw edge back by a quarter of an inch and then fold it again to attach to the tape. There we go. There we go. And now I'm gonna repeat that with the other side. Okay, so now when I open up the side seam here, this is what it should look like. No raw edges at all on the seam, all folded back. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here with this other seam. Okay, once you have it all pressed back or taped back, however you got it to stay, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. Now, if you don't want your bobbin thread to show on the outside, you wanna switch out your bobbin thread now. So what we're gonna do is with the seam up, just like this so we can see it, we're gonna sew about an eighth of an inch seam allowance right along the outer folded edge on both sides of the seam. So these two seams right here, where we folded it, we're going to just sew it down so it stays like that. But we're sewing from the back side, so in the end, the bobbin thread will be showing on the right side. So if you need to change the color of your bobbin thread, go ahead and do that. And then just sew along each long folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both seams, both sides. All right, so now I marked a half of an inch from the edge that's open. So you see we have our open bottom here. I marked a half inch up from that and I'm going to fold back my material wrong sides together to, so the long raw edge meets that half inch mark. So essentially I'm folding this back by a quarter of an inch. That's what I'm doing. And I'm gonna try to not use tape right now because my machine is not enjoying it. And then you can measure up one and one quarter of an inch from that first drawn line. Or if you have the quarter inch fold over down here, instead you can measure up from the bottom of the fold here, one and a half inches, just draw another line. This is just gonna make it easier to fold everything properly because what we're going to do now is after we have that quarter inch fold we're going to fold this again so that we can fold it three quarters of an inch and i'm going to use clips to hold this in place this time and if you have material that you can iron uh, go ahead and just iron this that'll be easier than using the clips or the tape once you have one side folded like that so it's folded a quarter inch and then folded three quarters of an inch do the same thing on the other side all right, once you have this press clipped, whatever you whatever you need to do to get it to stay, taped, however you need it. We're gonna take this to the sewing machine. And again, we're looking at it with the wrong side. So you might wanna flip this, flip it so it's right side out because we're gonna be sewing on the inside looking at the wrong side. So again, bobbin thread is gonna show here. You're gonna sew along this inner folded edge here. So right here on the inside where it's folded over, you're gonna sew along that at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the entire thing. This is gonna create a little gap between the fold on top to that stitching, and that's gonna be where we put the drawstring through in the end. 
So now grab your exterior that is facing right side out and then use your drawstring channel here and your drawstring channel should be facing wrong side out. And the top is the folded over edge that you just got done sewing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to insert the drawstring channel over the top of the exterior so that the folded over edge is down. So drawstring and exterior are right sides together and drawstring top is on the bottom and match up their side seams. So press open that exterior side seam if it went back and then clip together at their side seams and then just kind of straighten it out, get those seams up to match and then clip along the entire top edge here. And now I'm just gonna baste around this top clipped edge here at a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, this is just to hold these two pieces in place and then when we put the lining on, we'll have a bigger seam allowance. Now with your lining wrong side out, you're going to take your exterior that has the top in it and you're gonna just tuck it inside the lining. So it's lining wrong side out, the channel, drawstring channel, wrong side out. So wrong side of drawstring channel to right side of lining. And then your exterior is on the inside, wrong side out. So once again, match up the seams and clip those together. Do this on both sides and make sure you press those seams open on the lining if they're not already open. And then once again, just line up the top edges and clip together. And now I'm gonna sew around this top clipped edge at a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end and it's easiest if you sew it from the inside. So sewing on the inside of the basket instead of on the outside. All right, once you have that done, use the opening on the lining to gently pull the exterior and the drawstring piece out and then reach in through that hole and push out the corners of the exterior. There we go. And so just do a quick check, push in the lining, and you should have something like this with the exterior right side out, and you have your drawstring channel right side out on top like this, and then the lining on the inside. So before I move on, pull out that lining, and then we just need to close up this hole. So you can just kind of tug right along the edges where it folds over, grab some clips, and clip these together just to tuck in those raw edges. And now we're just going to top stitch right over this clipped edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, after you have the lining closed up, just shove the lining in the bag and give it a little zhuzh. All right, so this is what it should look like now. So now grab your drawstring and a safety pin. And what you're gonna do is you're going to insert your safety pin into the end of your drawstring, whatever material you're using. And then you're gonna insert that safety pin into one of the openings where it's split open here. You see that? Let's see if you guys can see better. You see how it's split open on the sides there? You're gonna insert it into one of those little channels. And then using that safety pin, you're just gonna kind of push it through by pushing the material around it. So I'm just kind of like shoving the material down over the safety pin and then I hold the left side and then I pull the right side. And that's just pulling that safety pin over towards the left all the way around. Once you get to the end, you pull it out a bit and check. Sometimes, depending on your drawstring, it might start fraying. So if that's the case, that's okay. Like mine is, you can trim it down a little bit. It's okay if it's shorter than 34 inches in the end. Trim it down a little bit, maybe fold it over, insert your safety pin, and then continue on. The thing is, is if you don't address that, as you get like halfway through this channel, your safety pin's gonna come out, but your drawstring's not because it will have detached from the safety pin because of that frame. So keep pulling. And then once you get to the very end, which is where the other end of your drawstring is, just pull that out. And then I'm gonna just trim down both edges a little bit so they're nice and neat. And then I'm gonna pull them out that they're even. And once I have them both at the same spot, I'm just gonna tie them in a little knot together. So I just kind of wrap both of them around my finger and then both of them through that loop and then just make a little knot just like that. So now what you can do is you kind of pull on it. And again, 
Water resistant canvas is not the best for this because it is more stiff. However, it still works. You just kind of have to work with it a little bit. There we go. So here's the other one I made. I like, I like the color blocking. I think that looks really cute. There's little chubby pouches and they're going to fit perfectly in our basket. Let's just, let's see. So here's the basket we made previously. And I have my zipper on it and everything. So I'm just going to take one of these little pouches and shove it in there. Put the drawstring in there. And take the other little pouch. I'm going to shove it in there too. Oh yeah. So stinking cute. And then I can flip my zipper panel up tuck these in. Oh my gosh, I know for those of you guys who work with yarn, either crocheting or knitting or anything like that, this is just like a dream, right? Look, you got them nice and tucked in there. Zip it up. Super organized, super cute. All right, last thing, let's work on the little wallet. All right, for the little notions purse, you're gonna need to print out the template and use that to trace this out. You're gonna have an exterior and a lining piece. Make sure you have these fastener points marked. We're gonna mark those on our material now. And I'm just going to use my stiletto to pop a hole where those fastener point marks are. And we're going to transfer those marks to the wrong side of the lining. So while I'm here, I'm also going to transfer the top mark. So the little curved edge is the top. I'm gonna to transfer that mark to the right side of my lining because I'm gonna need that later. So to do that, I'm just once again gonna use my template. So now I have the mark for the rounded edge on the front and the back of my lining panel. And then we're going to just add a couple pieces of some sort of stabilizer. I have Decova Light. It can be fusible fleece. It could be just a piece of scrap material, whatever you want. To attach it, I'm gonna use tape. I know it is fusible, Decova Light is fusible, but I don't have my iron warmed up, ready to go. <laughs> this is just quicker. So I'm just gonna tape these on. And this is on the back side of the lining. So the wrong side of the lining, right over those dots that we just marked. This is just gonna be reinforcement for the snaps. All right, now on the wrong side of the exterior and the lining on the bottom straight edge, mark one inch up, again on the wrong side. And you're gonna fold your material back by half of an inch. So you're just gonna fold the raw edge up to meet that one inch mark. So you have a half inch fold over. If you wanna use an iron for this, you can. If you wanna use some tape to help hold it in place, you can, whatever's easiest for you. I'm gonna use tape, but my machine has been kind of temperamental with this tape. So I'm not gonna to use too much of it, just enough to hold it. Okay, so once you have the bottom edges folded up, you're gonna take your exterior and your lining and you're gonna lay them right sides together. Grab some clips and you're gonna clip along the long side edges and then the rounded edge. But you're gonna leave the folded over bottom unclipped or unsewn. If you need to clip there, that's fine. Just don't get confused and sew down there. All right, once you have the sides and the top clipped, we're gonna sew along that clipped edge at a half inch seam allowance. You're not gonna sew along the folded over straight bottom edge. You're just gonna sew off of it, you know, off to the sides. And make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have it sewn together, we're gonna trim the seam allowance down. You can trim it in half or like a little bit more than half. You're gonna definitely wanna trim it up here at the top. Um, if you have thicker material and you're like, I really don't wanna trim it down too much, then we can just cut some little slits here at the top. So we have that trimmed. And then over here on the rounded corners, you could just take your scissors and cut little slits into the seam. Some people like to cut little Vs. That's nice. You could use uh, pinking shears as well. That's nice on corners, but I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna use my scissors. That's fine. All right, now we're gonna turn this right side out and then just put your hand in there. And if you have a turning tool you wanna use, you can use that, but we really wanna smooth out these corners and smooth out the seam. Now I wanna do, I like to use clips for this. If you wanna use an iron, you can, but I'm gonna fold my seam nice and straight and I'm gonna use clips to get it to look just the way I want. So see right now it's all bubbly. This would be very difficult to take to the sewing machine and top stitch and get a, you know, good look. So I like to just press along the seam. I reach inside if I need to, to push out any little trouble corners. And this, this is gonna give me the, as good a finish as I can get, which is pretty nice. So then I'm just going to take a little extra time on these rounded corners to get them to look nice and not so jaggedy. And then once you have the sides done, just make sure your bottom edge here is still pressed with that half inch seam so you have no raw edges anywhere. And you're gonna add some clips to the bottom here too. Cause we're gonna sew everything now. 
So now we're gonna top stitch around the entire unit at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I like to start on the bottom side here or so. It's hard to pick a place that's not that noticeable in the end because this bottom folded over edge will be noticeable. Uh, I like to start on the bottom side somewhere and then just make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, now the fun part. We're gonna first start by punching out the hole on the top flap here. So remember how I marked a dot on the lining side of the rounded part here? This is why, because I need that now. If you don't have it, you can check the pattern and find the measurements for this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that out. So I'm using a hole punch for that. And now we're gonna fold up the bottom edge here up, lining right sides together just like that, so that the side folded part here measures four and a half inches high. I'm gonna use some clips to hold this together just so nothing moves around on me. So once you have that folded up, now you're gonna fold the flap down so that the whole pouch measures four and three quarters of an inch high. So it folds down mostly. And, and don't stress out too much about everything being perfect here. It just has to fold down. That's all. It's just the bottom folds up, the top folds down. That's it. <laughs> it the, the height, don't worry about it. Five inches high, that's cool. Four and a half inches high, totally great. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't stress about it. Just try to get it to look neat. So now we have that hole that we punched on the flat part. So I'm just gonna use a marking tool to stick in that hole so I can get a mark on my bottom fold over piece. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right there. That's my mark. And that's gonna show me where I need to put the other part of my snap. So now let's install the snaps. So the flap part is going to get the cap and it's going to get the little donut piece. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you grab your associated dies for that. So for that, the bottom die is like a little bowl, the top die it looks like a donut should go in it because <laughs> that's where the donut piece goes. So the cap part goes on the exterior fabric on the flat part, just like that. The donut piece goes on the lining side. And then we're just going to lay this so that it's cap side down into our rivet press and press that in place. There we go. And then for the male end, you're gonna have your other die set, which are like a pokey bottom and a screw in top that has like a little hole on the top. I don't know the terms. All these years and I still don't know the terms. So now the male set has like a longer nub and a short nub. So the longer nub is gonna go in underneath on the lining side. And if you haven't already, make sure you grab your hole punch and punch out the hole from where you marked placement just a minute ago. There we go. And now with the male part, we're gonna take the male end that has like the longer appendage and we're gonna push that up from the lining side to the exterior. And then we're gonna take the shorter bit of the male snap and we're going to just insert that there over the longer bit. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this. I hope you guys are following. And then I'm just gonna insert my rivet press here so that the bottom pokey bit goes right inside that longer bottom bit and push it down. There we go. Okay, so now our snap is installed. How stinking cute is that? So now what we need to do is when you go to the sewing machine, we're just gonna top stitch right over these sides. I know we already have top stitching thread there. Um, it's okay if you go over it, but we're gonna top stitch over both these clip sides at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so here is your little flap pouch. It is so cute. So now I'm gonna show you, I already have a snap on the front here, so you can take your little pouch, insert it into that center pocket, push it down and then you can actually just snap it to the pocket. How stinking cute is that? So I'm gonna show you how to do it on the other side. So what I do, I'm not, I'm not gonna measure anything, but you're gonna need another male end of your snap. I'm just gonna slide this down so that the top edge of that envelope on the folded over bit there is matching up with the top edge of my pocket. And then I'm just going to fold down my flap. And honestly, you have a lot of wiggle room here on where this goes. So what I'm doing is actually just kind of pinching it with my fingers right here. And that's gonna leave a little indent on the material. And then I'm using a pen here to just mark where that indent is. Very basic. And then I'm gonna pull out my little, my little pocket friend there. And then I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm punching through the pocket. So not through the whole bag, just through the pocket where that dot is. And then I'm gonna grab another set 
of my male snaps and then the longer pokey bit goes behind the pocket and pushes through to the front. The little short nub goes on top. I'm gonna grab my rivet press. I still have the same die set in there so I can just insert it and press it down. And there we go, easy peasy. Now I can slide this in here like that and pinch it down. So that's in there. Here's the one I made previously. I'm just gonna slide this one in there and snap this one down because if one is cute, two is super cute, right? How fun is this? I hope you love making all these little extras. This whole bag, this whole project is one of my absolute favorites, honestly. I, I, if I could buy every single one of you guys this pattern, I would. Uh, it is one that I think every single person should have the opportunity to make. I just love it. And I'm keeping this. I'm keeping this. Alrighty. How cute is that? Yeah, I have, I have one on both sides. Why not? If one is great, two is better, right? Uh, I love this. I love this so much. This is such a fun little tiny pouch. Such a cute little thing. It's something simple too that you could keep in your wallet with you. If you're going out and about, you don't need to carry a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I know it's a, it's a very simple design, but the simple designs are usually the best. So I'm just gonna snap it right back into place. How cute. And then here is my second drawstring bag. So now it's nice and full. This is gonna be great. Obviously, you guys who are knitters and crocheters, you're gonna go, oh my gosh, this is great. I'm gonna separate my yarns. I'm gonna have all my little goodies in here. I'm gonna stick them in this bag and put all my needles and stuff in the pocket. And you can put this in your car, going on a road trip, you're not driving, <laughs> and you can just get to, get to your craft work, get to your handwork. How fun, right? How fun. I love this. I love simple patterns. And I love a pattern like this where this is a simple pattern. Trust me, you should make this bag. You will love it. Uh, it is not difficult to make at all, but it is a bigger bag. It takes a little bit more time. And so if you're like, well, you know, I don't want to commit to something big, just make these things. Make the extras. Like I said, there's so many uses for those extras on their own rather than, you know, having to commit to all of them in just one go. You can do a lot with this pattern. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you love making these cutie patooties as much as I do. I hope you have so much fun. If you haven't again made this basket, please go make the basket. Please make the basket, please, for me. Just make the basket. You're gonna love it. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something, have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roads, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my patrons. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos, go make something.